الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علیہ و صحبہ و سلم احمد سبحانہ و اشکرہ و العظیم لطفی فی تکفیر خطایا و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد ابن عبداللہ صلی اللہ علیہ و علیہ و سلم One of the important manners that we should observe during fasting is guarding our tongue. Is that we should be very cautious and careful about what we say, and especially about speaking about other people, and mentioning their faults, and their mistakes. And these are from the manners of fasting. These are from the manners of Islam in general, but especially while fasting. And since we're upon the holy month of Ramadan, it's coming up, then it's imperative that we try our best to observe some of these uh, important manners of the believers and these important manners which help to preserve our Islam and our Tawheed and our Iman. And as was narrated in uh, Sahih Muslim from a hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أتدرون ما الغيبة قالوا الله ورسوله أعلم قال ذكرك أخاك أخاك بما يكره قال أهدهما أفرأيت إن كان في أخيه ما أقول قال إن كان فيه ما تقول فقد اكتبته وَإِن لَمْ يُكُنْ فِيهِ فَقَدْ بُحْتَهُ In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that was narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه and collected in Sahih Muslim The Messenger of Allah ﷺ said Do you know what ghibah is? Do you know what backbiting is? And they said, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين They said Allah and His Messenger know best. The Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, to remember or mention your brother with something he dislikes. Then one of them said, what do you think about if what I say about my brother is true? Then the Prophet ﷺ said, If that is the case in which it is true and what you, what you say, then you have backbitten him. And if it is not true about him, then you have committed slander. This shows us that it is absolutely imperative for us as believers in Allah and followers of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be cautious about speaking about other people regardless of whether it's true or not true and as the ulama always mention that if there's no maslaha, there's no benefit in something, then leave it so if there's going to be facet or there's going to be more wickedness and more harm by doing something and mentioning someone's faults even if they're from Ahlul Bid'ah, if the harm is going to outweigh the good, then leave it, because you're going to fall into a greater harm. So, what can we take from this as fasting Muslims, as Ramadan is about to approach in approximately about 10 days or so? What can we take from this lesson? Most importantly, we can take from this is the tahrim or the prohibition of slander and backbiting and secondly we take from this that especially during the holy month of Ramadan because in the in Ramadan you have the chance of ruining your fast and who wants to fast restrain their desires refrain from eating and drinking 
and have no reward from it. No one is fasting in order to lose weight or in order to become more in tune with their body. No. The purpose of fasting is to come closer to Allah and to fear Allah, to achieve a degree of taqwa. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba aladina min qablikum la'allakum tattakum. That we have, that fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those people who came before you in order that you would fear Allah. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order that you would have God-fearfulness, which is staying away from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practicing His commandments, the things He's commanded you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah forgive us of all of our sins and bless us to be of those people who stay away and avoid backbiting and slander. And in another hadith, which illustrates for us the wickedness and the prohibition of this wickedness and of, of backbiting and slander is that during the time when the Prophet وسلم, ascended to heaven, to the heavens, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He saw, he looked at a door. وَنَذَرَ فِي الْبَابِ وَإِذَا قَوْمْ يَأْكُلُونَ الْجَيْفِ قَالَ مَا هَوْلَا يَا جِبْرِيلِ قَالَ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ لُحُومَ النَّاسِ So the Prophet ﷺ observed the people. And these people were eating a foul substance and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he asked Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam about these people why are they uh, eating, you know, jaf, or, or this is also translated as injustice or oppression. So why why are they, uh, you know, why are they being punished like this? In essence, so Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam, he responded to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Those are the ones. Those are the people." who eat the flesh of people. And of course they don't physically eat people's flesh. But Allah describes it as in, in the Quran. Lahma Akhi. And the Prophet ﷺ in authentic ahadith, literature, also describes it as Lahum Anas. That eating the flesh of others. So it shows you this is a repulsive thing in and of itself. Very few societies in the world practice cannibalism. And possibly they do this for religious rights, whatever their, their reason to, to lessen the status of their enemy and, 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 and various rituals and rites of passage and reasons that they take uh, part in these activities. And these activities are khabith, no doubt. These activities are filthy and wicked. Islam is very far from these evil practices cannibalism and so forth so since even as a world community in G almost most all societies except for those subcultures those rare subcultures detest eating people's flesh eating uh, cannibal uh, cannibalism so this shows the this gives us the example that this is a detestable trait and this means, or akhaf, this means to backbite them or slander them. So, again, it illustrates for us the importance of avoiding that, this evil trait. 
And in another very famous hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned about the ones who uh, backbite and, the, and about their punishment. <clears throat> and that this is uh, one of the reasons for being punished in the graves. The scholars have deducted, deduced from this hadith that this is one of the reasons, asbab adab al qabr. These are one of the reasons that a person receives punishment in the grave. And that is due to the fact, as, as was narrated in the hadith, the Prophet walked by a couple of graves. He said, Verily, those two people, they're being punished. And they're not being punished for something uh, which the people think is great, you know, meaning that the people take these things lightly. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, he said, and as for the first one, فَكَانَ لَا يَسْتِنْجِنْ مِنَ الْبَوْءِ So the, as for the first one that received this punishment in the grave, it was because they didn't clean themselves properly in purification, meaning that when they were using the restroom, there's different narrations. La yastinji min al bowl, another one, and another uh, ruaya uh, that they la yastatiru min al bowl, or kama kala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they didn't protect themselves from their urine. So the, the point being here is that this is one of the reasons for being punished in the graves, is for a person not cleaning themselves properly when they go to the restroom, either not protecting their garments from having urine splash on it or, or najasa, you know, uh, filth being on their garments or on their body and not washing it. And the other reason is, uh, getting down to the main point, is the other one, the Prophet Sallallahu Nimima. And as for the second one, he used to carry the tails of the people, meaning he used to do nimima, he used to do slander or he used to spread the tales of people maybe it was something about some someone else and he did it with the purpose of spreading wickedness his cuss this nia was to spread wickedness so this shows us again the importance for us as muslims to avoid these wicked traits and i ask allah the almighty accept our good and forgive our evil